All right, really quickly, think of Twin Falls and what comes to mind. Maybe the Prime Bridge, maybe the Snake River it crosses, or maybe Evil Knievel, who once tried to jump that canyon in a steam-powered rocket cycle. Well, there are other famous people with a connection to Twin. Look at this guy over here. But maybe you're familiar with Mark Felt, otherwise known as Deep Throat, the secret informant during the Watergate scandal. He's from Twin Falls. He kept that and his identity hidden until just before he died. And there was someone else whose attachment to Twin Falls has been declassified for at least the last four decades. Nikki Six, the songwriter and bass player of one of the biggest glam metal bands ever, spent several of his formative years, some of his junior and high school years, in the Magic Valley. That part is known for a lot of people. But did you know, over the last several years, there have been several points in Nikki Six's origin story where the strength of his connection to Twin Falls has been confirmed. This is that story. Jerome might have been small, but it had a downtown with a J.C. Penney, a Western Auto, a Dairy Queen, and a couple of drugstores. A lot has changed in Jerome since the 1970s. In those days, Jerome had a stoplight at the intersection of Main and Lincoln, which were the main streets in town. The stoplight is still there, but the J.C. Penney, the Western Auto, they're not. And neither is a certain commemorative mural. Eh, it kind of is. You can still see the peepers of Nikki Six peeking in on the patio of a local pub. So why Nikki Six? Well, it's pretty well known, the bassist of one of the biggest bands in rock history, Motley Crue, twice called small town Jerome home. Back then, he was called Frank Ferrana, a skinny Italian kid who at 14 was sent to live with his grandparents. Frank showed up just before the beginning of ninth grade at Jerome Middle School, while in the middle of growing out his hair. We had finally compromised on something that looked like a bowl cut. Then, to top it all off, I had just gotten glasses. Jerome plays a pivotal part in Nikki's new book, The First 21, How I Became Nikki Six. But there was only so much trouble for the cool kids to get into because Jerome was so small. But the city to the south also had a significant role. It's not quite the original, but it's still a good guy. Yeah. Twin Falls is home to Red's Trading Post. Has been since the 1940s. Lowell Red Kenny passed the business to his son. My grandfather was uh, Wayne Red Kenny. He had a red hair and all that. They sold everything at Red's. Everything. You had tools, you had... Guns. guns. Oh, definitely guns. And some musical instruments. Yes. <laughs> you could pretty much find anything. And if not, we could find it. Ryan Horsley grew up around the store, and by the mid-1980s, he was getting into music. I was in uh, at least sixth, seventh grade. Okay. And, um, you know, all of a sudden, uh, Motley Crue is huge. I love Motley Crue. That was also when the stories of the band's connection to the Magic Valley began to circulate. Then everyone's saying, you know, Nikki Six is from Drome. I didn't believe it at first, but yeah, then everybody's like, hey, no, he's, he's from here. And then people started saying he bought his first guitar from your family's business. And at first it was exciting, but then you started hearing people going, oh, hey, and he was my brother's best friend, or he's this, he's everybody else's best friend. And so it wasn't that exciting to hear because you started having a lot of doubt of if it was actually true. So when did it find a click and, and confirm for you that, okay, this is in fact true? There was an episode of L.A. Inc. with um, Kat Von D. This week on L.A. Inc. L.A. Inc. was a late aughts reality show shot in a tattoo studio. What if I do all this work and he hates it? My girlfriend's insane. It starred Kat Von D., who at the time was dating Nikki Six. And the pressure's on as I agree to take on a new design project for my man Nikki. She redoes the studio, and at that point, um, she presents him with... Uh, a picture of our old um, store. That's so weird you found this. You found it with my storage yeah. place in there, right? This is where I bought my very first guitar when really? I was like 16 years old. I start getting phone calls left and right from everyone, um, honestly, across the country, um, asking me if I saw the episode. How long was I gone? Three weeks? I'm blown away. And so then it's official. Um, so then we can finally say this is where he bought his first guitar, but then what do we do with it? What Ryan did was call artist Bruce Whipple. I had heard the word Motley Crue, but I had never heard Nikki Six. 
Ryan wanted a sign outside his shop, but not just any sign. I thought, let's, let's do a big sign, but at the same time, something he would be proud of. Ryan wanted it life-size. He wanted it to say, this is where Nikki Six bought his first guitar. He wanted something people would come and take their picture with. And people have. But since the rolled steel and copper sign was installed in 2014, Ryan quietly harbored hopes of a certain someone stopping by to snap a photo. A lot of people would say it, but I'm like, nah, it's not gonna happen. It was a cool thought in the back of your head, but nah. Until it did. Until it did. It was on a Saturday. That's when we came down to feed the cats. Because that's what you do. Yeah, that's what I do. I have to feed them every day. <laughs> that day in November, the store was closed, and Ryan's mom, Terry, saw someone out front. He come jumping up on the, on the, <laughs> on the deck up here, and then pretty soon he's on his knees, and I told my husband, what is he doing? He was apparently sticking something under the door. Terry relayed this story to Ryan days later. So I asked, what did he stick under the door? We got these little picks. You saw those picks. under the door? I, yeah, they were in that little crack down there. Terry didn't quite pick up what he was putting down. No, I don't play the, the guitar. <laughs> I was taught. Then Ryan showed his mom a video. Is this the truck that he was driving? Is this the guy? And she's like, oh yeah, that's him. Like, oh, it's, it's Nikki Six. Further proof? The picture Nikki posted on social media days later. Wait, what, what, what just happened? And so it was, it was nuts. Yeah, he was here. <laughs> it's just cool. <laughs> but what is still up for debate, whether Nikki nabbed his first guitar at Red's. Years ago, after the Red sign was first put up, the bass player tried to set the record straight, saying he actually stole his first guitar from a Seattle music store around 1972. But as he explains in his book, it wasn't a bass. So he sold it and used the money to buy a real four string. Soon after, now 16, a drug arrest brought Frank back to Idaho, but not empty handed. I took a Greyhound bus back to Jerome. I had my Fender bass with me, a duffel bag full of clothes. And it wouldn't be long before Frank found Reds. Whenever Tom and I had gone to Twin Falls, we'd stop by a place called Red's Trading Post. There, he saw someone had pawned a Univox guitar. It was a Les Paul copy with a beautiful sunburst finish. So Frank bought it with money he made moving irrigation pipe. The same guitar in this picture from 1976, just before Frank left for Los Angeles. So yes, the first guitar Nikki Six legitimately bought, he picked up at a pawn shop in Twin Falls. And nearly 50 years later, he returned for a bit of payback. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It was cool that he knows that this community loves and supports him and that, you know, that we were proud of him. And that's, that's the biggest thing. This is still his home and he's always welcome here. So the oldest gun shop in the state of Idaho plays a pretty big part in the origin story of one of the biggest rock bands in the world, which is pretty cool. Nikki actually lived a short time in Twin Falls before he moved to Jerome to live with Nana and Tom. He did come back to Jerome once after he moved to L.A. in 1976, and you can see a few of those pictures online. But now he has kind of moved back to his Intermountain roots. He now calls Jackson Hole, Wyoming home. We tried to ask Nikki about his trip to Twin last month, and we're still hoping to coordinate time during his busy schedule.